Views from the bottom up. Colorism. Does mainstream media, entertainment, and social media determine what we perceive as black beauty? And are the consequences colorism, bleaching, and low self-esteem? These are views from the bottom up with Rufiwe Modisele, presenter and model, rapper and writer Shaw Majorzi, Siko Sei, TV presenter and beauty activist Mshoza Kwaito Star. Majorzi. Hey, hey. colorism is more prejudice or discrimination against somebody because of their skin color. Now usually it's prejudice against people of my skin shade, a <laughs> darker skin shade, um, and by people of the same race, which is absolutely absurd. When people of one so-called race or of one ethnic group further um, discriminate um, amongst each other, um, based, if we're honest, on proximity to whiteness, right? So it's like, uh, it would be like, we're not white, but probably people that are closer to being white might be treated better. Is the association that people make in terms of wanting to group people, um, especially according to their racial identity. But for Rifile, ah, colorism is, is a whole different thing altogether. Do music videos and social media impact the way that we view colorism? Essentially, if you think about it, a music video is about portraying like what is desirable, right? You're saying like, I've got this really nice car, so everybody should want a really nice car. I've got this really nice house, which everybody also wants. Got a lot of money, which everybody wants. And I've got a light-skinned honey, like, which is what everybody should want. You're saying that this is what is desirable. So you're there, you're looking at things which are not necessarily real, but you're getting addicted to it. You're thinking they're real. So that's the problem. It also has this extreme, extremist effect on people. So if light skin is in, if people think, OK, light skin is what is beautiful, then it just goes overboard and everybody starts to think, okay, this is what is supposed to be beautiful. Things are not really spoken secretively or in a hidden context or behind closed doors, but more so in the open field, you know what I mean? It's more, how can I say, people are more free to actually say what they need to say and in the context of colorism, we see that race has become like such a big thing where people now can identify and say exactly what they mean and mean what they say. And social media has contributed to the fact that people can actually identify now what albinism is. They can either speak it negatively or positively. I see it as them being the creators of this yellow bone, black bone thing. You see a lot of music videos promoting black beauty, black skin, because it's in, because social media says so. But now the problem is, if you're black skin, you also have to have a small waist and a big ass. So now it's like you can't win, you know? So there's always new standards that you have to match up to, which is absolutely crazy. We see the same type of girls in movies and music videos. Is there one type of black beauty that is more popular than another at any given time? I would say the popular kind of black beauty is basically a black beauty that kind of, it looks mixed, it looks ambiguous. Uh, the kind of black beauty which is like very, very small waist, very, very big butt, you know, um, also long hair. There has been some changes recently like, okay, curly hair, is kind of in but even then it's like mixed race kind of curls it's never like your very very kinky hair even when black beauty is being praised as well it's like the very black you know you have to be like really really, really dark i think there's one type of black beauty at every given time so now pop culture dictates this is what black beauty is at this particular time lupita for instance lupita came out black, dark, beautiful chocolate, the natural hair. Now they said, this is what black beauty is. So basically they're shoving it down our throats <laughs> that this is what black beauty is. They always put you in a box. So today, if you're not within the box, then you're not considered beautiful and that's not fair. Black beauty has been placed in a specific, specific way according to Western standards, all right? And I think as black people, we're getting to a place now in the new age version where we're now trying to develop our own understanding of a black beauty. The Western culture has always put black beauty as the extremely dark, tall, skinny girl. I don't fit into that context. Whereas with white people, there is room for like that girl next door look 
white girls can wake up and be super cute just the way that they are and black you have to be extra your butt has to be extra big your waist has to be extra invisible like you have to look extra exotic you you know your curls have to be extra curly you know it's just always you have to be over the top and it's never that appreciation of just being and now we've also progressed to a level where we see black beauty as being a yellow bone whereas it's like guys we come in different variations how is it that we are now defining things in that sense and not saying that you know black is african is who you are it doesn't matter what shade you come in but the formation is what is more important. They have decided which we will decide on your behalf, which white is in, light skin is in. And I always say, I, I meet people who talk about skin lighting and telling me with my phone picture, I say, what makes you think when you light it will be beautiful? Actually, we've got people who light their skin from dark and they become ugly. I'm not, I'm sorry to say ugly, but they don't look good at all. So it's not necessarily, it doesn't mean when you light skin you're beautiful, please. It doesn't mean that. I have serious reasons why I did what I did. And I would really hate it for my, my girl to grow up being told witty, black is not in, light skin is in. And that, it, that would be blamed on the media. So is there a problem in the term black beauty? Because after all, if you're white, you can just be seen as beautiful. But if you're a black girl, there seems to be a need to put an adjective before your class of beauty. It's very, very personal. It's, it's not, people take this, skin lightening or or skin bleaching some call it very light but you find which there are people who are, who are really scarred because of a simple thing that was said by the media or someone who said it taking it from the media directing it to someone else so i think they should not be given a chance to take they should always actually be banned from talking about this yellow bones and black bone thing they should just take people as they are we are all South Africans, we're all Africans at the end of the day. My personal definition of black beauty is just your heritage actually, more than anything. Black beauty for me is your heritage, more than the color of your skin. A lot, a lot of people will argue that, but for me I've had to see things differently. I'm a black woman in a white person's skin. And my black people are gonna say that I do not qualify as a black beauty. But I still qualify as a black beauty because of my heritage and understanding that I am really a black person, not in the stereotypical context, but we need to teach our kids that you come in variations even as a black person. Like now we're starting to say natural hair um, is dope, right? But even then you look at all the natural hair tutorials it's about like sleep with your hair twisted like this so that it can come out looking curly like this. Where is that space of saying, this is how my hair grows, like, sharp, that, and that's also beautiful, you know what I mean? So it definitely has to broaden to include also just being normal. I feel like when it comes to white beauty, they never ever say this is the definition of white beauty. There is a wide array of beautiful white women. Now you have models like Ashley Graham, who's literally just broken all the rules. She's a plus size model, she's gorgeous, she's white. Nobody ever says there's a definition, but then when it comes to black people, we have this tendency of wanting to put ourselves in cages, in boxes. So, yes, let's broaden the definition, but better yet, let's not have a definition at all. We're defining things, and if we can't reach it, then we are, we are hard on ourselves, and that's where self-esteem just goes totally, totally low, so. Does the entertainment industry invest enough time to understand the complexities of the different tones of black skin? Or when it comes to makeup, are we all painted with one brush? Furthermore, how does this lack of investment impact black girls in front of the camera? I'm um, of... Um I think a kind of a tone that's maybe easier to work with. I think I see a lot of like some of my colleagues and stuff sometimes getting made look to look almost ghostly and which is really, really whack. But personally, I haven't had so many issues. Girl, this dark skin has gone through issues. Number one, they try and make me two, three shades lighter. And then they're like, you don't want to be light? And I'm like, no. They feel, interestingly enough, that is what you want because it's it's you know it's widely accepted that light is right like they say number two issues with lighting especially when i'm positioned right next to a light skin person then they're like oh, we can't get the lighting right you know you're too dark and then you just have issues where people just pass comments about you know you can't wear a certain color because you're too dark don't wear black you're already dark enough I'd be lying if I said my skin tone has been an issue 
when doing shoots. You mean whereby they're telling you that you don't have a color or... No, no, that has never happened to me. I've, I've never... The only thing that has happened, I find that when I'm doing interviews, they always exaggerate, exaggerate my color. Um, I would do a shoot and when I see myself on the magazine, I look like Britney Spears. And when you meet me, I look like Uzodwa, you know? So they do manipulate. There's always going to be an issue with my skin tone. No surprises about something like that. The freelance always going to have to battle with white clients who say, hey, but she looks what? Hey, but she looks what? You know, is she really black or whatever the case is? I always get asked the question, is she black? Because I don't look it. Rafila is always going to have a problem because of the way that she looks. My heritage is black, but still it's going to be unacceptable to white people and unacceptable to my black people. I'm not black enough for black people and I'm not white enough for white people or black enough for white people as well. So it's always going to be a debacle as to how I get placed. For roles as a black person, it's always a question and it's never upfront. It's something that is discussed behind and it's never in my face, but I always know it. So how far do the limited views of trending black skin tone make black women consider changing their skin complexion in order to fit into a stereotype? And who's really to blame for the bleaching phenomena? I've never felt pressured to change my skin tone because I understand who I am. I don't need that validation from the rest of society to tell me who I am. A lot of people would say, but Fifi, you're born with albinism. Have you ever felt the need to be dark or anything like that? Never. People appreciate the fact that I keep it real. I am who I am and I adore my skin. I would not change it. Obviously, as a teenager, I would ask mom, why am I lighter? You know, why do I, not really why do I look like this? You know, it was more like, why do people say this about me? Not what I said about myself, but why is it that people are saying this? So the problem was there. It came from people and never from myself. I've never felt pressure. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I should be honest or what, but I've never felt pressure to, <laughs> to, 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 to lighten my skin color. Um, what happens is there are people who feel pressure too. With me, okay, I've never. Funny enough. I always thought I was like too light skinned, you know, I always thought like, because it, it has everything to do with where I grew up, where like I was the lightest person, you know, um, around. And so I always felt like I should tan and I should whatever, I'd be more normal or whatever. But that's a very specific, it's a very specific incident, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'm like, I'm very aware that the general trend is not in that direction. The general trend is the pressure to be lighter. I mean, if they keep telling you, why are you so dark? At some point, you're just going to keep asking yourself, or you're going to ask yourself, why am I so dark? You know? So there is pressure always to brighten up your skin. I've been told it would, imp it would, it would help my career if I was lighter. Um, but then again, there is pressure as to whether I feel the pressure or not. No because I know what I stand for, I know what my blackness stands for, I know where it's taking me, I know where, what it's going to do for the generation behind me. What do you think of the bleaching phenomenon? See, here's the thing about the bleaching phenomenon. Bleaching is not new. It's been happening in my grandmother's time, in my great-great-grandmother's time, you know. Um, but now in this day and age, you know, when you feel like bleaching is your key to, to fame, is your key to success, is your key to catching a rich man, um, I mean, I guess there is evidence to prove that, yes, it does work. But you are more educated. You understand the health implications of bleaching. You understand that once you start bleaching, you cannot go back. You understand the implications psychologically, emotionally, physically that it has on your children and your children's children. So why would you do it? Do you know what I'm saying? It's very selfish. I think it's terrible. I think it's, it's the worst invention on this planet in terms of taking away people's identity from themselves. I would get teased when I was younger. I would go through being called ugly and all sorts of names because of not being identified as a specific color. And now you get black people who want to go just as light. I'm like, why can you not appreciate that? Why can you not appreciate what God has given you? Your skin tone 
it's such a beautiful thing. I get it, to be honest. I totally get it. Like, I mean, the way that I've been treated when I was younger, the way that I'm treated now for being light-skinned, the things that guys say to me for being light-skinned and stuff, um, I can't imagine that you would tell somebody who's dark-skinned, like, nah, don't try and get those same privileges. It's ridiculous. It's like men will say, oh, wow, we love yellow bone, and we'll still tell dark-skinned women don't bleach. Like, in which dimension are you talking now? Like, you know what I mean? Why, why, why must a dark-skinned woman, seeing the benefits that come with being light-skinned, why should she not try and be light-skinned? You know what I mean? Who can tell her not to? Other than it would, it would literally require a society that stops privileging light skin. Otherwise, you can't, you can't, you, I will never criticize those women who bleach. I will never. We're Africans, especially in South Africa. Our grannies, our aunties, we're lightening their skin. We do not know why. Honestly, till today, we do not know why. Because it was not as bad as it is today, whereby the media would tell them about skin lightening, they would sell those things. I don't know why they were doing it. We grew up seeing a Coco Bates, you know, about Auntie, we see pink, I'm a shoe baba, you know. However, I re I don't feel that I'm the one to really say, Guti, the skin bleaching should stop, it should continue. Though, I would still go back to the media to stop perpetrating it because now you find that skin lightening products are the most selling products in the country. And by the media trying to make them show a bad or a kanyimba or a bird person doing, they're actually blowing it out of proportion. They're actually selling it in a way. And I honestly think it should not be allowed in South Africa. Although it's been there, we cannot stop it, but it should not be allowed. But by me saying that, I'm probably putting myself, you should be the first one to be killed for it. But with me, it was a skin condition. Even today, I say people do not believe it. They found it beautiful with Nyanzile, but with me, I've stopped doing it. And if it comes back, I would be obliged. It would be a must for me to go back and do it. But I would never allow my sister or daughter or anyone a car to do it. Is mainstream media and social media to blame for the impact of colorism and the definitions around black beauty? Or is it simply part of a historical legacy that we as black women have to live through? To the black woman, whether African or American, to the black woman, understand and know your roots, know your heritage and where you were from. You are born of woman, not of color but yet again take pride in where you come from. Your identity is the DNA that you have in you to understand who you are from the core of your roots and your heart and your spirit and your soul. That is what makes a black person is your soul more than anything. But to our men, you're pretty for a dark-skinned girl is not a compliment. Stop saying that. Of course, let us get away from the social media craze it is filters, it is fake life, it is plastic surgery that most of us cannot afford. Um, your validation doesn't come from having a small waist and a big ass at the detriment of your health. You know, it doesn't come from twerking, you know. It comes, <laughs> it comes from being yourself, it comes from, you know, educating yourself, making yourself better as a person. I was saying to Kelly Nukan, you need to install in young kids, good. It's not really about beauty. We are pale mm. You know, Kanyimba and Shows are the most trending things a few years ago. Mm. Lamborghinis, every man who is rich would want to date him, Shows or a Kanyimba. Mm. But there are new kids coming. And more these days, those kids that are being killed are trying to be your Kanyimba and Shows. Yes. Because that's what the media sold. So everyone has to wear long Brazilian hair and have a rich guy, or oh, yes. trading so guys and all that. So that trended. The it's because day. of the media. Exactly. <laughs> no, but they were telling me which shows are you have. Yeah, Osmoshe, like, Abu Kanyimba. I don't think if I went to Kanyimba personally, enlightening his skin, he would, she would have wanted to do it like that. But because the media, it was front page every week, that's what they sold. They were selling it for people to do it. At the end of the day, it's up to all of us to not live our lives in front of the lenses that have been turned on us. Because ultimately, we decide what filter we'll wear. <laughs>